we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA, fans of justice and equality. I'm Andy Hum. <laughs> How about the fans of reality TV? I'm Ann Northrup. We will get to it all, but we will start with uh, the big marriage win in the Fourth Circuit in the Virginia case, as well as wins in marriage in uh, Colorado and Florida. And in the non-discrimination and employment front, out gay representative Jared Polis of Colorado has just introduced a new version of the federal LGBT rights bill, ENDA, with a narrower religious exemption. And he's seeking to get the bill onto the House floor through a discharge motion, although this is all politics. House Speaker John Boehner has a one-word response to President Obama's executive order on LGBT rights. You think about what it might be. <laughs> Michelle Bachman, on the other hand, has more than one word to describe what the real gay agenda is. Uh, gays in St. Petersburg, Russia, um, managed to pull off a pride rally for the first time without encountering violence. That's uh, because Russia has other things on its mind these days. Uh. But in uh, Scotland, the Commonwealth Games, which are the British Empire version of the Olympics, were much gayer than the Olympics. In one country, fully a tenth of the population came out for a march for LGBT rights. You think about what that one might be. Uh, I have my guess. I, I haven't discussed this with okay. you, so I'm not sure what the answer is, but I think I know. And Nathan Lane in Broadway's The Nance is coming to public television. Yeah. And we also want to alert you to our guest next week, former uh, presidential candidate on the Republican side, out gay Fred Carger, is coming back here to talk to us about his crusade to get uh, the National Organization for Marriage to tell the truth about its funding sources. Yes. Uh, but meanwhile, let's plunge back into marriage news. We, we do start in the, uh, in the Fourth Circuit. This is the uh, um, third federal appeals court to rule on same-sex marriage, and we won again. We did. Uh, this is the Virginia case, which was brought by AFER, Olson and Boyce, uh, uh, eventually joined by Lambda Legal and the ACLU. Well, they had, there were two separate cases going on. The uh, Olson and Boyce case in the Eastern District of yeah. Virginia. This uh, also, in terms of your, if you're keeping count, this is the 29th consecutive positive ruling that we've gotten. It was a two-to-one decision. There was a dissent. And some of the things the judges said were things like denying same-sex couples this choice prohibits them from participating fully in our society and interference with a fundamental right warrants the application of strict scrutiny. Now, again, this is strict scrutiny to, the, to marriage. Yes, not to us as a class. Co correct. Uh, and they said marriage is such a fundamental right that any discrimination in marriage has to be subject to a strict scrutiny analysis. Yeah. And they applied this analysis and said, uh, you can't discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation in marriage. Right. So uh, this also applies or could apply to Maryland, North and South Carolina and West Virginia. Well, Maryland already has legal marriage equality, so that's taken care of. Uh, and the great thing was that the Attorney General of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, who's a Democrat, immediately after this uh, ruling came out and said, you know what, there's just no point to me pursuing uh, defense of North Carolina's ban on same-sex marriage anymore because we're going to lose. Well, he said there really are no arguments left to be made. We're out of, we're out of gas here. Well, it hasn't stopped uh, attorneys general in other states from well, making the same old arguments, which are stupid. The South Carolina attorney general will continue to defend the ban, and in West Virginia, the attorney general said the ban is in effect. We're reviewing the situation. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and in fact, activists were out in uh, Greenville, South Carolina uh, today, as we are taping, 
uh, lined up around the block to support same-sex couples going into the Marriage License Bureau to apply for licenses. Six of them, several who have been there several times yeah. trying to get married, and they say we love each other, what's the problem, and they're turned away. We've been talking about this movement in the South for, uh, what, at least a year now. This is the Campaign for Southern Equality, and these are the grassroots local heroes that we admire so much, who are really driving this whole subject sure. and driving LGBT equality across the country from the beginning Acro around I mean, the world you get a lot of emails from big gay groups asking <laughs> you for money to help with this but it was couples on their own to some extent who uh, to drove extent. this movement and yeah. the big groups wanted nothing to do with it exactly so they're still out doing it uh, you could look up the campaign for southern equalities website to see what they are doing in the south but they are pressing forward now the Virginia attorney, uh, well, the Virginia attorney general, who is now a Democrat, it was uh, Cuccinelli, the Republican, when this case was first. Who was filed. a horror show? But the new Democratic attorney general and new Democratic uh, governor then refused to defend the ban. <laughs> But there are two county clerks in Virginia who are pursuing this case from the bad side, and they now have the opportunity to appeal. They can appeal to the whole Fourth Circuit uh, own bank, uh, where we, where most of the judges were appointed by Bill Clinton. So we're uh, he was against same-sex marriage. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also win with all these judges, some appointed by Reagan, some appointed well, by each Bush, this, some this, appointed this, by This Clinton, was a two-to-one decision, and yeah. the dissenting judge, Judge Niemeyer, says that same-sex marriage will uh, result in the right of father to marry his daughter <laughs> and the right to marry multiple partners. He said that. <laughs> Well, there's still a few old timers left on these now, courts. Now, the question but we is, are, we are winning with most of these yes, judges. But let's, so not, they let's can, not leave the Fourth Circuit. I mean, uh, this does. You know, I mentioned some of the other states, and we talked about how Boulder started doing it, Colorado, because another state uh, in the, because the tenth, 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 tenth Circuit had done it. So. Uh, but Lambda's John Davidson said that uh, he really, you got to watch out for getting married under these circumstances where you haven't gotten the full green we light. We have heard no uh, news that any clerk no. in Virginia is going rogue on but, this decision. But, but, but. It might be, he said, it might be worth the risk if uh, one of your, if your partner's about to die. Well, that's the or old story. Or if, you, uh, if you're about to have a child, he said. Or you could go to Maryland right next door and get married there or the District of Columbia. While this decision has been stayed pending appeal to either the full Fourth Circuit or the Supreme Court of the United States. The, the, and uh, congratulations to our pal James Essex of the ACLU. He and Ted Olson were the ones who did the arguing in court along with the local lawyer who was originally defending or representing the uh, plaintiff couple and, uh, and they won. Well. Uh, not exactly a headline, but the Catholic bishops of Virginia said that uh, they obviously objected to this, but they said marriage is ordered toward the regeneration and survival of the human race, and we don't need faggots and dykes raising kids to do that. Now, they didn't say that last part, <laughs> but I do know when I'm being insulted, and they were trying to insult us. We play a big role in raising kids in this country. Leave us alone. We have kids. Take care of we your own problems. Kids in that church. We do a better job of raising kids. Uh, Ted Olson, on the other hand, at the end of this said uh, he, he really can't believe the uh, unbroken string of victories in marriage cases. He said it's uh, remarkable. He's never seen anything like it. Now, there is a little sniping going on back and forth uh, because of all the controversy over the coverage of the Prop 8 case, uh, the book that was written, the movie that was done, and the, the sense that Olson and Boyce and Chad Griffin, now running the human rights campaign, having brought the Prop 8 case in the first place, were not giving credit to the entire marriage movement. Uh, now, when you see the press releases that come out around these wins, you have one, you know, one faction touting their own work and not really mentioning the other side, and and it's a little. If you know the history of this, it's a little I, hideous. Back I and forth. rarely have occasion to quote Ronald Reagan favorably, <laughs> but on his desk it said, "There is no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit." Exactly. 
Now, uh, so you're right. This is the Fourth Circuit, Virginia, Maryland, North and South Carolina, West Virginia. Uh, and the Tenth Circuit is Colorado and Oklahoma and Wyoming and a few other states. Uh, so they have all had recent decisions yep. at the Court of Appeals, which is the highest court in those circuits, uh, striking marriage bans. And then the, uh, the Ninth Circuit is the California West Coast uh, uh, Circuit. Now, they decided the Prop 8 case, and that was a win for us. But because the Supreme Court on standing issues basically knocked it down to the district court, they're still hearing cases like the Nevada case. Yes. Uh, so we're we're going back to the Ninth Circuit for more uh, decisions there. And lest we forget, in the Tenth Circuit, since we last met, uh, a federal judge, Raymond Moore, there struck down the ban on same-sex marriage, and the uh, uh, and the Colorado Clark. Supreme Court finally got the Boulder clerk to stop issuing licenses. <laughs> 199 had been issued as of Monday. So upcoming, we have the sixth circuit, which is Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Kentucky, mm -hmm. a total of six cases in four states, and they're going to hear them all on August 6th. This will be a star-studded show brought by the National Center for Lesbian Rights and Lambda Legal Defense. And the ACLU is involved there, too. And, uh, and then uh, three weeks later, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals will hear the Indiana and Wisconsin cases. And then a couple of weeks after that, there's another one. Uh, <laughs> I've lost track. I've lost maybe track. the Eighth Circuit, maybe it's six, seven, eight. But the point is that all of these cases are now rising up from the district court level to the Court of Appeals. Uh, there will be more decisions at the Court of Appeals, and then we'll see whether the Supreme Court takes any appeals of these decisions. Right. Since they are unanimous so far, there is some thought that uh, we could achieve this without going to the Supreme Court, but there's also some sense that the Supreme Court will want to weigh right. in. And, you know, some rogue circuit may decide against us. I'm predicting the Fifth Circuit, which covers Texas and uh, Louisiana. And if you get us, if you get, start to get division among the circuits, that's when the Supreme Court often has to step in. Exactly. They don't have to do anything, of course. Now, what do you think about this article that Al Adam Liptak wrote in the New York Times? He is a reporter who's written a book on same-sex marriage, has followed it all very closely. And he said in the Tenth Circuit, uh, one of the concurrences in the decision there, in the Oklahoma case, he said it's problematic because the judge says, look, you know, you got to give these people the right to marry, but it's, but the, the people who denied it to them did not do it on the basis of animus. Wrong. And, then, and, and yes, and then there's this big debate about what animus is. Do you have to be a raving bigot or can you just be sort of prejudiced and uh, not very well informed? In your, in your animus. Uh, there's no question that all these uh, laws were pay passed on the basis of animus. Uh, you have only to look at the history of these constitu state constitutional amendments being passed 10 years ago. Uh, they were all done that because means, an they... An awful lot of people hate us. You wouldn't use the word hate, would you? Uh, sure I would. They all hate <laughs> Absolutely. us. Absolutely. They all hate us. I, I think there is still a significant portion of the United States population and worldwide that regards it. Do you ever read the comments on these uh, yes, I do. online on, articles? Mostly anonymous comments. Well, fine. And maybe they're written by 12-year-olds. But uh, <laughs> there are a lot of nasty, angry, yes, there are. Uh, sexual, and uh, anatomical uh, uh, criticisms and yes, they they do hate us. They they may be closeted, self-loathing gay people. Okay. They may be uh, uh, ignorant bigots. There but there's a lot it. of animus out they there. They hate us. <laughs> well, they some, really hate some, us. Some do. Fewer okay. than used to, yes. but some yes. And uh, we'll get to more and more stories today that will prove that. But some good news. Also, in we told you last week that uh, a judge in Florida and Monroe County, Key West, had struck down uh, the state ban on same-sex marriage there, which applied only to that county, and that decision has been stayed. But now a judge in the Miami-Dade County uh, Circuit Court has legalized marriage. Again, uh, the decision has been stayed, but uh, these decisions seem to be moving county by county in Florida. That judge cited the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and in that Monroe County case, the couple in that case 
They're, they're getting a little uh, impatient about get, being able to get married. They want the case to go directly to the Florida Supreme Court. Well, everybody wants something. <laughs> <laughs> but Senator Marco Rubio of Florida <laughs> gave a speech at Catholic University attended by a hundred people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where he stood up for man woman marriage and said uh, that it deserves to be elevated. Uh, but he is not intolerant to LGBT people. I des I think that the is man that animus. I think the man woman couples deserve the same chances that uh, we have. <laughs> How's that? Uh, and meanwhile, uh, in Alaska, we got an interesting and nice ruling. They ruled that the same-sex partner of a person killed on the job was entitled to survivor benefits under mm -hmm. the workers' compensation law. With they don't no have, they low don't, legal marriage. They don't have anything going up there. Uh, uh, this was a woman who was shot dead at her hotel job by a disgruntled ex-worker uh, in the hotel. And she and her partner had been together for 10 years. And so the surviving partner applied to workers' comp for the uh, normal spousal benefits and made the argument that they were not allowed to get married. And the court said, look, you are, in fact, a, a, a clear spousal couple, and therefore you should have uh, access to these benefits. In Wyoming, uh, the judge there is letting the same-sex marriage suit go forward in Laramie County, a district judge there. The state argued that Wyoming should j just wait and see what the Supreme Court has to say about this. <laughs> Why we have to go through a trial? The judge says it isn't clear what the high court will do. Well, it's not, but uh, what he did was allow the, uh, the other side from us uh, time to start assembling information. So that's, that's the process continuing. In Pennsylvania, another uh, good decision in uh, what's regarded as a uh, common law marriage, this is before marriage became legal for same-sex couples in Pennsylvania, a woman whose uh, uh, same-sex partner had died won a ruling from the state tax department that their 31-year relationship qualified her for an inheritance tax exemption. Uh, her partner died in 2012, long before marriage became legal. So this is essentially the same decision as in the Windsor case, uh, the DOMA case at the Supreme Court, but without them having gotten legally married. They could have gone to another state to get married. They could have, like Edie, gone to uh, Canada to get married. I, I'm sure but for they, a lot of our viewers, benefiting. this is opening up a lot of ideas about mm -hmm. cases that they might pursue now. Well, what it's saying is that as we establish uh, the uh, not just the legality, but the uh, rationality or the uh, you know societal sanction of same-sex couples, that courts are beginning to get a little looser in their interpretations right. and say, you know, you should be acknowledged as having a real relationship. Well, we're doing so well that the National Organization for Marriage is looking to form an international organization for marriage, uh, by which they mean against our marriages. Well, this is this is uh, this, this is, is the formula now. The evangelicals hey, and hey. right wingers who are losing here are hey. going abroad. They're just running out of gas here. Uh, HRC is branching out internationally as well, well. which isn't really their bailiwick, uh, but they realize that we're winning so much over here that they might need something else going on. Well, I I hope they succeed. And in that. happy birthday to Edie Windsor. Turned yes. 85 this week. Yes. Uh, Representative Mark Ticano, Democrat of uh, California out gay has introduced a, the Social Security and Medicare Parity Act to try to make married same-sex couples eligible for Social Security and Medicare benefits no matter where they live because the federal government in trying to adjust itself after the DOMA Edie Windsor decision a year ago about same-sex legally married couples being entitled to federal benefits uh, the federal government has been twisting itself in knots a little and saying, well, you're eligible for some benefits, but not for others, because this is the way the law is written. Right. And so he's introduced this bill to say, look, let's get rid of all this stuff about it. it matters where you live. If the state doesn't recognize it, let's just make sure that all these married couples, no matter where you were married or where you live, if you're legally married, you get the benefits. And that would be great. Yes. Uh, and in Ohio, 
where there is not, you know, there's the, there are court cases, but there's not like a push for uh, marriage legalization in the legislature or the voters, I think. Well, there was that voter referendum thing they were working on, but... Well, now they're doing a public education campaign, and they've put together a TV ad. They've got a campaign called Why Marriage Matters. They've got a couple, Henry and George, who've been together for 50 years and did get married in New York but live in Ohio. This is a grassroots public education campaign to build support for marriage equality. Uh, so that sounds like a good thing. And uh, next week here in New York, there is a documentary film showing about the campaign for marriage equality in New York. The film's called History in the Making. Uh, there's also going to be a panel discussion afterwards. It's Tuesday, August 5th, 6.30 p.m. at the Anthology Film Archives on 2nd Avenue and... Second or third. Well, you street. know, I wonder if this film is going to include the 2005 court case in New York where we lost at I the would high hope court. So. At the high court, it's too bad they don't have us yelling at the judge who made that decision. Right, <laughs> uh, but I mean, which we did. You know, for people who don't remember, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, who ostensibly supported same-sex marriage, and Governor Spitzer, you remember him, the, uh, the client nine, they both appealed uh, orders uh, to, to um, uh, allow same-sex marriage. Well, actually, Bloomberg did, but uh, no, no, uh, Spitzer was the attorney general at the time. Yeah. And he defended the law, which, you know, was outrageous. Was, because uh, as we have seen subsequently, attorneys general are not required to defend unconstitutional laws. And presidents of the United States. Yes. All right. Uh, and a little touch of good news from Oklahoma. We told you about the lesbian who'd been expelled from Southwestern Christian University because she married a girlfriend one semester shy of graduation. Well, she has now been uh, enrolled at the University of Central Oklahoma, That's which is happy to take her still, in. Still a great injustice. There. Well, it is an injustice. And and uh, that is coming to light more uh, in piece in the New York Times this week, but people are starting to pay attention to things like uh, what happened at George Fox University yes. in Oregon, where a Quaker trans, school. trans student uh, turned down for uh, dorm housing uh, uh, consistent with uh, his current uh, trans male identity. Uh, and the, uh, because the Department of Education rules say that even though a university gets millions of dollars in federal funding, they can have an exemption from non-discrimination rules if they assert a religious privilege. Uh, Which is terrible. Privilege. I mean, we didn't let Bob Jones University get away with that when they banned interracial dating. The federal government stepped in and said, you're not getting any more money if you're not going to allow interracial dating. Well, here's the deal. Uh, the You're right about that. But, and the federal government is not required to give them that money. They are required to let them run their policies any way they want, but they can then withdraw the funding, and that is what they should be doing right. here. They've but, been giving uh, exemptions. Uh, well, Spring Arbor University in Michigan, Simpson yeah. University in California, and of course the George uh, Fox University. George Fox has made a slight adjustment. They now say that if you've had surgery, <laughs> to change your gender identity, uh, then you can move over to the other door. Teenagers, they want to do this. So here's the they latest. They don't want teenagers to do the surgery. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that correction. Uh, so let's bring you up to date on where things stand with the Employment Non-Discrimination oh, yes. Act and the executive orders and all of that. Uh, the news this week was uh, from Representative Jared Polis, a Democrat of Colorado, out gay, head of the LGBT Equality Caucus and chief spot. I think he's the head of that. He is the chief sponsor of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act in the House of Representatives. So there's been all this turmoil about the religious exemption language in ENDA and the fact that ENDA only covers employment and is not a comprehensive uh, civil rights bill. So he, remember when Nancy Pelosi said she had a secret plan to Nick, end the war in Vietnam? Yeah, that was Nixon. <laughs> well, she and said he she did had, have a secret plan. Yeah, keep bombing. Bombing. So yeah. um, Nancy Pelosi said she had a secret plan to fix, to do something about end and its religious exemption. And this is what it turns out to be. Jared Polis has 
entered a proposal to substitute the religious exemption language, to get rid of the overbroad language and substitute a much narrower standard religious exemption in the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. And we've, we've read this thoroughly? Yes. And it's okay. It is the standard thing. Now, is it okay? Well, that depends on whether you think an employment-only bill is Well, that's uh, the issue. Is I mean, have we moved sufficient. on? Have we moved on, and do we want more now? I mean, we, we, we want definitely more. want to keep people off the current ENDA and get them off the current ENDA. Uh, the only people lobbying for ENDA, it seems now, uh, is the Log Cabin Republican. Republican Club, which yes. just released a big list of small, so small, small town Republican mayors. Small <laughs> list of small town Republican mayors. So I think HRC well. has turned to them as the only allies they have left on this. Uh, but, uh, you know, HRC wants an immediate win. That's why they're continuing to push ENDA. So Chad Griffin can go on to his next job. Uh, Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to be humiliated for having supported ENDA all this time. The senators don't want to right. suddenly do a turnaround. So they're all still pushing ENDA. My, uh, ENDA is expected to die in this Congress. The question is we where do we go hope. from there? Where do we go from there? Does HRC and Pelosi and everybody say, well, now we're going to fix ENDA, we're going to write it better, smaller religious exemption, and we still have to push just ENDA because that's our best chance? or? Do we write now a comprehensive civil rights bill, housing, public accommodations, credit, yeah. federal programs, and employment, and start pushing that in the Congress, which is our preferred uh, method? The lessons of history are that you don't get two bites of the apple. You don't get to pass and, uh, and come back, and then you come back, uh, right? When, when well, do you come back and say you want housing rights? And when do you come I, I back and say public... I would argue that with you. I, as someone who supports a comprehensive bill, I would also say, 1964 Civil Rights Act, 1965 Voting Rights Act, 1968 Fair Housing Act. Uh, you can. That's because Jack Kennedy got his, got killed. Well, absolutely. And absolutely. Johnson was willing to sacrifice the Democratic Party in the South yeah. in order to get those bills passed. No question. I'm just saying let's. Let's With a lot of Republican support. Yes. In fact, prob many, probably more Republicans than Democrats. I'm not entirely sure about that. Well, as time goes on and we keep Parties hearing change. about uh, Republicans seeing the light on our stuff, uh, that's certainly one possible avenue. Although, as the Republican Party splits between its Tea Party conservative wing and its, uh, you know, three members of the moderate side left. Uh, I don't know how fruitful that'll be. But yes, Queer Nation is certainly supporting the comprehensive approach. Jared Polis is trying to fix ENDA with this approach. Yes. And my fear is that they will then proceed with the fixed ENDA in the next Congress when I would like them instead to do a comprehensive bill. Wow. But the real politics of this is, and I promised you the political analysis, Pelosi and Polis are doing this, and they have at, part of this is uh, Polis proposing a discharge petition. A discharge means you can't get, because it's a Republican House, you can't get it through committee. The only way to get it through the floor is if people sign a discharge petition, and that can bring it to the floor. You have to, get, you have to, get, a, you have to get a certain threshold of people. You do, and that gets it out of the committee for a floor vote. So the first thing that has to happen is the floor has to vote on the discharge petition. And that's what the Democrats want, because they want the Republicans on record with a vote against us so they can go use that in their midterm election campaigns. Well, we did this on the gay rights bill in New York for many years. It was the, probably one of the only things that you had a discharge petition on because we were so blocked in committee. And our allies even hated us for it, but we didn't do it uh, because we were, you know, for, for running a, you know, raising money or anything, we wanted to know how they stood. Yes. And some of them, of course, will stand up and say, "Oh, I'm voting against discharge because I respect the committee process." <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm really for this bill. That didn't cut it with us. No. And uh, and I am struck by the irony of the fact that the Democrats now have this great strategic plan to use us as their way to propel themselves to victory in November when 10 years ago the Republicans were passing all these state constitutional amendments as a way to win their own uh, election. Times change. Fast, well, well, fast. well, I mean, 
It, to show you how, how much they change, when they asked John Boehner at his weekly little press gathering, uh, what was his rea uh, did, does he have any reaction to the president's executive order on LGBT rights? He said, nope. <laughs> That's the one word that I was talking about. Well, earlier. he went on to say, the president signs a lot of executive orders. Because, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, they're after him. Well, you that. know, we, uh, we, uh, we had our long talk with uh, James Essex last week from the ACLU, mm -hmm. and we didn't, uh, we didn't run any footage of the uh, president signing the executive order, and this was quite historic. And so we do want to get that up now, if we can, and hear what the president had to say as he was about to sign the order. Uh, many of you have worked for a long time to see this day coming. You organized, you spoke up, you signed petitions, you sent letters. I know because I got a lot of them. <laughs> uh, and now, thanks to your passionate advocacy and the irrefutable rightness of your cause, our government, government of the people, by the people, and for the people, will become just a little bit fair. Amen. Uh, it is, uh, <laughs> doesn't make much sense, but today in America, millions of our fellow citizens wake up and go to work with the awareness that they could lose their job, not because of anything they do or fail to do, but because of who they are. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. And that's wrong. We're here to do what we can to make it right, uh, to bend that arc uh, of, of justice uh, the, the, just a little bit in a better direction. You know, in a few moments, I will sign an executive order that does two things. First, the federal government already prohibits employment discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Once I sign this order, the same will be explicitly true for gender identity. And second, we're going to prohibit all companies that receive a contract from the federal government from discriminating against their LGBT employees. America's federal contracts should not subsidize discrimination against the American people. And that's always been the point, hasn't it? Well, I like him giving uh, credit to grassroots activists and to the rightness of our cause. But uh, the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network is still asking that these Title IX religious exemptions that the schools are getting be re-examined and narrowed, Ended. which I think would be a good idea. But, but, you know, this isn't the end of the gay agenda, according to Michelle Bachman. Uh, <laughs> uh, she uh, says... I'm going to cover my ears. She but, uh, says, the gay community wants to abolish age of consent laws so that adults will be able to freely prey on little children. Well, she should know what the gay agenda is. She's married to a gay guy. You know, let's he probably not, told let's her... Let's not leave <laughs> any thought in anyone's <laughs> mind that any of this is real. Oh. It is complete but these nonsense. But this is a, you know, a U.S. congressperson saying these things. Is uh, she still in Congress? No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Michelle, are you still there? No, it's, it's uh, what's her name? It's gone. Right. All right, can we move on from Michelle? Yes. All right. Well, well one thing that's uh, on the D.C. agenda this week or next week is that the leaders of many African nations are coming for a U.S. Africa summit, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who say that uh, the administration should not have invited Uganda President Museveni. Yep. He didn't invite Robert Mugabe, at least, <laughs> or the president of Sudan, which is good, but uh, there may be some actions against uh, Museveni in Washington next week. Right. Um and the uh, the USAID, the uh, uh, International Aid Program, uh, has announced it will include LGBT programming in international work, uh, which is excellent. 
and uh, the Office of Personnel Management is amending its internal policies to make sure that it's not discriminating against anyone. I think that follows on right. executive orders. Right. We, we told you uh, of, uh, when it happened in 2010 about the, uh, a, a gay ma a man uh, who was here in Newark, uh, New Jersey for his high school reunion, went to a park in a cruising area and he was from Atlanta and the police uh, chased him and uh, there was a scuffle and he was shot to death, unarmed. His name is DeFara Gaiman, we have his picture there. So uh, he, there were no charges against the cop. Uh, who, was, who had a record it, of three previous violent incidents in sex stings in these parks. Yes, uh, Essex County is now paying, oh, $1.5 million to his wife and four kids, the, the guy who was killed. Nothing's happened to the cop. And it's just an outrage. Horrible. Uh, also, in Fort Worth, uh, the... <laughs> There was a story you may remember five years ago, a police raid on the Rainbow uh, Lounge, the uh, gay bar there, uh, very controversial, a lot of people hurt, a uh, terrible raid. Well, five years later, the cops in Fort Worth are now recruiting gay people to serve as police. And there's oh, a gay yeah. cop who made a very amusing video uh, on his own, sitting in his police car, and he's got a lot of stuff interpolated in the uh, tape. Uh, Google it on YouTube or, or search for it on YouTube, Fort Worth gay cop yeah. uh, recruiting uh gaze to the police force there. Uh, a less nice story is in Orlando, Florida, where a predatory tow truck operator illegally towed away a hundred cars parked at a hotel that was part of Gay Days down in Orlando. Mm -hmm. uh, the perpetrator did not even have a contract to tow cars. <laughs> he just sent his people out against the, and the driver said that they feel that they were, t were targeted because of their sexual orientation. The, the tower faces 29 counts of grand theft auto. Whoa, <laughs> that's serious. Mm -hmm. His lawyer said he harbors uh, nothing, uh, no animus against gays. <laughs> Well, there's some animus against gays in the South Bronx where oh. a transgender woman was, uh, you know, shouted at on the street, followed into a deli and assaulted there. First they said, don't serve her. Yeah. To the deli. Well, owner. they might have said, don't serve him. Who knows what they said. But they said, don't serve this person. And, uh, wow, it was it, awful. Yeah. So Assaulted it, her, injured her, injured her ear. It's important to report these incidents if you see them or are the victim or whatever. So uh, go to the Anti-Violence Project website, avp.org, to report incidents or to get a phone number to call their hotline. Uh, uh, terrible, strange story out of Michigan where some really uh, disturbed guy has been sentenced to 18 to 40 years in prison because he killed his two-year-old daughter. Mm. He bit her and beat her to death, and his excuse was that he wanted to turn her gay so she wouldn't end up with men like him. Well. That's what I call disturbed. That's very, very, very But psychotic. also a sad story from Wichita, Kansas, where uh, a gay male couple who uh, are regarded as great parents have taken in two adopted kids, four foster kids, uh, are now uh, arrested on uh, one count of child endangerment. They left uh, their 10-month-old uh, foster daughter in their hot car, and she died. These terrible stories of kids left in cars where they die, and now it's happened to these uh, men in Wichita. I feel like I have to give them some good news. Uh, we had, a, sure. lesbi we had okay. a lesbian governor in California today. What, for six hours? Tony Atkins, yes, then there's some absentee kind of a thing. How about sports news? Ah, oh, well, new news on the David Tyree front. Yes, uh, this the is the guy who uh, very anti-gay, very involved with the National Organization for Marriage, and uh, and very linked to far right-wing anti-gay people who are spreading anti-gay laws in Africa. And he was hired by the New York Giants. He was a former star player for the Giants. Uh, hired as director of player development, which means he's supposed to be an advisor to these uh, players about how to live their lives. This is not, you know, uh, 
quarterback coach. This is a guy who's supposed to be really telling them how to live their lives. So he's saying he's evolved. Actually, I don't know if he's saying it. He's being defended by Wade Davis, the out gay NFL retiree who met with him and is standing by him, but he's not really letting Tyree speak for himself. Tyree told him he would support out gay players. Uh, and, and, and he says, Tyree said to him, I really respect what you do, but here's my favorite little fact that's come out. It turns out that just two weeks ago, David Tyree on his Twitter account uh, posted the following tweet. My heart groans for the single Christian woman. Large numbers of men today are either immature or effeminate. <laughs> Two weeks ago. Well, it's in the Bible, you know. That's, they're against effeminacy in the Bible. And then there's the Minnesota, uh, well, you could look it up. Minnesota Vikings, uh, the, some state lawmakers want tougher penalties for the special teams coordinator there, Mike Prefer, for saying, let's round up the gays, put them on an island, and nuke it till it glows. Uh, yeah, they say that uh, Donald Sterling was banned from the NBA for life for his racist comments and that Prefer deserves more punishment. Uh, I'll give you some good news. Uh, 400 people showed up at the Trans Pride Beach Party in Chicago. Uh, much more than was expected. Uh, trans people and their friends, family, and supporters. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good thing. Uh, and a couple of other notes. Oh, activists, uh, as we were taping today, were sitting in at the LGBT Equality Con Caucus in Congress asking that LGBT issues be included in immigration reform, uh, an end to solitary confinement, uh, better treatment in detention, less deportation. Uh, and an Iowa paper fired a, uh, a guy who uh, works for them but writes an independent blog, and he'd written a lot of anti-gay stuff on his private blog. He has now filed an EEOC complaint for religious discrimination for being fired by the paper. Well, they're a private employer. They're allowed right. to do that. Right. I mean, they're not allowed to discriminate against him based on his religion. Right. Uh, oh, look. But, well, that's his claim. You know. Uh, the Orlando, Florida City Commission has unanimously adopted gender identity and expression non-discrimination. But the Baton Rouge Metro Council has postponed a vote on a fairness ordinance that would have included uh, sexual orientation and gender identity. And what about our... Uh, and uh, one thing before I get to that, new study out of the University of British Columbia says gay neighborhoods are declining, yes. becoming more integrated with all sorts of people. In the last 10 years, gay, the number of gay men in the neighborhoods is down 8%, number of lesbians down 13%, and the book is called There Goes the Gayborhood. Uh, he says it's both a sign of progress, but also a loss of cultural identity. A uh, big news story this week was that a top model in the uh, fashion industry, Andre Pejik, uh, ha came out as transgender. Well, he already had walked uh, the women's wear runways for Marc Jacobs. Uh, uh, he modeled both men's and women's clothes, but now he's Andresia or Andrea. Maybe. Uh, and we should say she. A and, she, yes, yes. because it is now she. Uh, having undergone. We, there's a local news report on that, which we may or may not be able to run. Let's see if we can get that to go. This summer, Kelsey Grammer. Well, anyway, has undergone gender reassignment surgery and said, I always dreamt of being a girl. And now it is. Always. Okay. Well, we hear that more and more. All these videos now going viral of these little kids who are uh, asserting their gender identity at a very early age. Well, kids are smart. And then there was the video of the little girl who doesn't want her uh, three-month-old brother to grow up. Oh, she was in I know, tears. Oh, I know. <laughs> that was so you know, cute. It is very cute. <laughs> yeah. It's going to haunt that kid for the rest of her life. <laughs> well, you sort of want to know... 
what is it in her head that growing up represents and you know as opposed to staying it's a tragedy growing up is a tragedy because because it you know you're always leaving something behind your previous self we're getting very philosophical uh, here. evidently well we don't have that much time so right. let's keep going well international news in russia in st petersburg the pride event there was pulled off without violence for the first time two dozen lgbt activists rallied uh, they said that the nazis were busy that's a quote uh, fighting in the eastern Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, it's not uh, uh, not pretty, any of this stuff that's going on. Uh, we are expecting momentarily a decision from the Constitutional Court in Uganda. It may happen by the time you see this. They're going to uh, issue some initial rulings on a, constitu on a challenge to their anti-gay laws. We would there, like an injunction against the law. Well, there are a couple of issues. One is the parliamentary procedure, because there wasn't a quorum when it was passed, so they could get rid of it just on those grounds, or they could go further and say that the law itself uh, violates the fundamental rights promised in the Constitution there. I was optimistic about this until they screwed us a couple of weeks ago on another court case and then I thought uh oh I'm I'm being a Pollyanna so uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not being a Pollyanna about our great ally Saudi Arabia where a gay man was sentenced to three years and 450 lashes for meeting men via Twitter. Yeah. He was caught by entrapment. The lashes will be doled out in 15 sessions. Not good. Uh, then there's a strange case in France where a 72-year-old local mayor in, I think, southeastern France uh, has is a virulent homophobe, hates uh, same-sex marriage, but this week performed his son's same-sex marriage. Yes. His son came out to him three months ago, uh, and he the mayor says, well, I have to do it for my son. I'm not going to do any more. I still hate it, but, you know, he's my son. And, and people would and talk. I just, I just found this out. People would talk if yeah. I didn't do it for my son. I'd do it for my daughter. <laughs> Why can't I do it for my son? Now, 5,000 people marched for LGBT rights, and this turned out to be a tenth of the population of this country, the Faroe Islands. Oh, which, I didn't uh, know that. The only Nordic country other than Finland not to have same-sex marriage. Uh, it's, it's, an autonomous, they, it's an autonomous country within Denmark. I was going to say. Faroe Islands are yeah, sort of yeah, off the north yeah, part yeah. of, uh, off the coast of Scotland, between, you know, towards Iceland. I thought the story was going to be about Vietnam, because they, 17 cities and provinces uh, celebrated pride there. Yes, they did. Um, the Virgin Islands is debating same-sex marriage. Uh, uh, Saint, and, yeah. Go ahead. No, and St. Lucia, uh, the Prime Minister Kenny Anthony there, asked overseas citizens living where same-sex marriage is legal for advice on how to handle the issue here. I thought that was enormously <laughs> sophisticated. Uh, let's see what they say. Uh, and in Prague, they are holding their pride celebration in a couple of weeks, and they are creating online avatars for people in like Russia and other oppressed countries to participate online in Prague Pride by choosing avatars that will participate in all the events there in Prague. Strange. Away from the computer and out in the streets. <laughs> And the Commonwealth Games are going on in Scotland. Uh, and our old pal Peter Tatchell has been lobbying hard that, that, that LGBT issues be brought up because so many of the Commonwealth nations, especially in like the... Like 42 of them. Yeah, are very anti-gay. Anti but even he was surprised yeah. when the first minister of Scotland, uh, Alex Salmon, uh, gave a speech supporting LGBT rights flew the rainbow flag from the, you know, headquarters. And launched the One Scotland campaign in favor of diversity and equality during the games. Yeah. And then we have a picture there of uh, John uh, Barrowman, is that his yeah. name? His Torchwood actor and everything. He did the opening number uh, at the games, yeah. singing. He's a great singer. And during the course of it, he just grabs this guy and kisses him. I'm sure it was all planned, uh, but... Uh, well, they were <laughs> singing about equality, so it was a whole yeah. part of the opening ceremonies and they also had a pride house which of course russia had refused to let happen during the olympics in sochi uh, and now we're debating whether the world cup uh should be allowed to happen in sochi in four years on, as is scheduled to happen and on the other hand uh, jamaica still has its anti-buggery laws so there is going to be a big demonstration at the jamaican consulate in new york 
on August the 6th at noon uh, uh, at 3rd Avenue and 47th Street. Okay. Uh, moving on uh, to, well, as long as you announce that event, I'll announce another. There is going to be a memorial service in New York for the, particularly the AIDS researchers and activists killed on the Malaysia Airlines plane on their way to the International AIDS Conference. Yes. Uh, this is also going to be on Wednesday, August 6th at 7 p.m. at St. John's Lutheran Church at 81 Christopher Street. That's uh, next next Wednesday. Yeah, it's next Wednesday, August 6th. Uh, 7 p.m., 81 Christopher, St. John's uh, Memorial Service for the uh, researchers and okay. activists. Some AIDS news. In Bangkok, they found uh, that almost half the young gay men not using condoms, acquire HIV within five years of their first sex. Uh, nine percent, nine percent a year infection rate for those who don't don't use condoms. It's only it's a two percent rate for those who say that they do. Uh, yeah, and there were various headlines from the International AIDS Conference. None of them really earth-shattering. Some of them reinforcing stuff we already knew. For instance, that stigma and discrimination and anti-gay laws drive people away from testing, help spread HIV and the epidemic. Still lots of calls from activists and actions at the conference for universal treatment yes. uh, to try to stop the epidemic. You know, there's a lot of talk about uh, ending the epidemic. New York City has talked about ending the epidemic. By 2020. Uh, the U.S. Uh, AIDS office has talked about ending the epidemic. Mainly by getting people tested and adherent to their drug regimens, which would make them uh, less infectious. But they're still not doing enough outreach to the populations most at risk. They're, they're talking a lot about testing and not so much about treatment. They're, they've well, got a long way to go. Well, they did a Truvada efficacy study that uh, sa <coughs> said missing an occasional dose, you're supposed to take it every day, is yes. okay. But if you take it four times a week, there's 100% protection, they said. And if you took it three and to four times a week, 84%. If you take it two mm. times a week, no protection. Uh, and there are some who say that the claims of 100% protection are based on sort of statistical models and uh, not fully proved yet. And people still worried about the side effects of being on an antiviral drug for you know, yes. the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, so it's still controversial. People still have to make their right. own decisions, but people should protect themselves in one way or another. And the, uh, the folks at Gilead were confronted at the conference about the fact that the hep C drug that they have costs a thousand dollars per pill. Yes. Eighty four thousand dollars for a regimen. And they're saying, well, it's a lot cheaper than getting this disease. <laughs> that's basically what they said. Well, that's how these drug companies do their pricing. And, you know, we're still uh, many years after this first came up uh, debating these trade packs that uh, right. get done between the U.S. and other countries. I I'm uh, uh, chomping at the bit to hear your, some of your entertainment news. You had said you had something for me. <laughs> oh, on I the, do. On our I walk do. up here well, uh, from 23rd Street. I, I'm looking at the New York Times book review section on Sunday as I, I've now learned to skim it since I have no time to read Please. books anymore. I just like to know what's going on. And there's a new biography of Laurence Olivier. So I decide to skim that a little more closely because of course of all the stories of him having relationships with men. And I'm curious about whether Not this book Not just men, deals Danny Kay. Danny Kay, exactly. But then I noticed that the author of this review is John Simon. Who is anti-gay? Longtime theater critic for New York Magazine, who has said some horrible things about women, about gay people. Yes. So here's what he says. Um, uh, oh, he says, I suspect that the this latest biography may well be the best yet, perhaps even definitive. And then he says uh, that Ziegler, the author, uh, he says this parenthetically. Ziegler mentions the rumors of homosexuality, but argues against them. Oh, God. <laughs> and that's the entire mention of uh, Olivier's homosexuality well, in the review or in the book. That's what Doris Kearns Goodwin did about uh, <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt, who, got letter, who wrote letters saying to her female uh, lover, I kiss the northwest corner of your mouth. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Well, when Blanche Wiesencook finishes the third volume, which she's about to do on the uh, biography, she will on. be right 
here. Let's have her on. Oh, believe me, I, uh, every time I see her, I say that. Uh, John Travolta was told by a judge he can't stop his alleged ex-lover from <laughs> spilling the secrets in the, in the court case. Uh, <laughs> former employee who worked with him 25 years ago said yeah. they became lovers. Uh, Tr Travolta says it violates our confidentiality agreement. Yeah, well, those aren't going very and far I, these days. We've told you about the play on Broadway, The Nance, about gays in, the, in vaudeville. And if you, with Nathan Lane, and if you missed it, it's going to be, you, you set, mark your calendar for October the 10th. That's when it's going to be on PBS. So are you watching the Masters of Sex? Uh, I, you know, Masters I don't watch that because I hate them. Because they were very anti-gay. Yes, they were. Masters and Johnson were. So I didn't, I just didn't want to watch it. I'm sure I've told but you this story, but I'll tell you, I'll tell the viewers again. When I was a producer at the CBS Morning News, uh, they, uh, people in charge announced one day that they were booking Masters and Johnson to come on to talk about their uh, we can change homosexuals yeah. study yeah. and I this is the uh, joy of being out on the job this is in the late uh, 80s or mid 80s uh, I go charging into the boss's office and I say you are not putting them on the air to say this and if you are I am booking a, a gay psychologist who's gonna come on and argue with them and he says oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> so I go off and I book a gay psychologist. It takes me about three minutes. And I go back in and I say, okay, I got him. And they call up Masters and Justin and say, all right, you're now going to have to debate this guy. They cancel. Good. They are not willing to show Good. up to do it. So anyway, but I watch the series. Yeah, how is it? Uh, it's okay. Uh, I mean, is it favorable to them? I mean, look, in the beginning, they were like Kinsey. They were opening exactly, up stuff. Exactly, and that's what and, this is. And then they were sort of losing their cachet in the 80s. So they said, well, let's take, take yes. a controversial stand this and say much, we much, can change gays. The series is much, Disgusting. much earlier. Yeah. So, uh, so it's before we get to any of that. But uh, imagine my surprise. I'm watching this last week, and uh, Masters is uh, delivering a baby. And he brings out the baby, and it turns out to have both a penis and a vagina. And we then start a storyline about intersex issues. And he, re he is, uh, uh, you know, adamantly demanded by the father to cut off the penis because wow. he's not raising any kid who, uh, you know, is uh, uh, different. And he refuses. He refuses to do the surgery. And then he goes off to meet with Johnson, who's his lover at this point, while he's still married. And, uh, and the father finds some uh, GP to do the surgery anyway. Sure. And well, so that's... he goes charging into the hospital and says, what do you mean you just did the surgery? Standard operating procedure in those days. So, and I also want to recommend the movie Lucy, which has nothing to do with gay, but was very entertaining. All right. And, and that's it for we're us. We're out of time, and we will see you next week. And With Fred Carger. Yes. Okay, see you then. Bye-bye.